Hi everyone, today I will show you how to create registration and login form in WordPress. So let's just begin. So first of all, we have to login into our WordPress account and to create the registration form and the login form, we have to install the plugin. So let's go to the plugin and add a new plugin here. And now here you have to write down Forminator plugin and you will be able to see the Forminator plugin okay by the WPMU Dave so we have to install this plugin and now we have to activate this plugin okay so our plugin is activated as you can see here so now let's go into the Forminator and you will be able to see the dashboard of the Forminator and as you can see here that we have already created the two forms the login form and the registration form but right now i would delete both of these forms and we will create the registration and the login form from the scratch so let's delete both of these uh, forms here okay so the login form is deleted so now let's just go and delete the registration form in the similar way okay so now as you can see here that we don't have any forms and we don't have any poll here and with the help of formulator you can actually create the form submissions poll submission and the quiz submissions but right now we only want to create the forms so let's just click on the create in the forms so click here and you will be able to see the different templates here the blank contact us newsletter uh, quad request and the registration and the login and create a post okay so first of all we want to build the registration form so i'll simply click on the registration and click on the continue okay so i am good with this uh, name here so let's click on the create here and as you can see here that we are inside the form editor and we have these default fields here the username email and the password and if you want to insert the multiple fields or if you want to add the new field you will simply click on the insert fields here and you will be able to see the different options here from the name to the payment field so if you want to add the payment field you can add the paypal field or the stripe field okay so we have the name email phone and we have the address and if you want to add the website uh, in the registration form you can simply add it from here and we also have a lot of these different options as you can see here and you can even add the e-signature but the thing is it is only available in pro version okay so right now i don't want to add any field here i just want to go with the default fields that we have uh, given by the formulator so let's close this okay so let me just go back here so let's just suppose if you want to add any field from here so i want to add the address and in the address what do i want to get uh, do i want to get the city no state no zip code no country no I just want to go with the basic address in the apartment okay so we have the settings so in the settings uh, you can actually define here that whether this field is actually the optional or the required field so right now it is the optional field in both of these options and we have the styling here so if you want to add the additional CSS classes you can simply add it from here and in the last we have the visibility so you can go in the visibility so you can simply show or hide these fields based on the conditions or the rules here right now i will just simply skip this so close this the thing is i don't want to have the address field right now i just did it to show you uh, how can we insert the field in our form so let's remove this right now okay so if you want to have the look of your form you can simply click on the preview it will actually give you the preview of your registration form here okay so next we have the appearance so in the design style we have the default flat bold material and the none so i will simply go with the flat so you can also go with the bold material or the none if you want to but i will simply go with the flat here and in the layout we have the option of image size of the radio or the check uh, box button so if we want to set the custom image size you can simply set the value here or if you want to go with the automatic value you can simply click here okay but let's just put it to the custom value here and you can use the default colors and you can also use the custom colors in all of these elements if you want to but let's just stick with the default colors here and we also have the theme font so if you want to use the theme font 
So simply enable this option but if you want to go with the custom font you can simply uh, change the font of each of these options from here okay but right now I just want to go with the theme fonts okay and we also have the form container in which we have the default value for the padding and the custom we can have the custom value so in the custom value you can actually provide the padding from the top bottom left and the right but right now let's just stick with the none value here and in the similar way we have the border we can provide the custom value here if we want to so let's just select the value to the none right now in which we have the three different options the custom compact and the comfortable and we have the field container in which we have the border so you can also give the custom value to this border and if you want to enable the custom css you can simply enable it from here okay as you can see here but i will simply disable it right now and now let's just go into the user registration okay so in the user registration we have the user meta mapping and this would actually assign the form field to the user meta key to use the data collected from the visitor to create the new profile okay so i just want to keep it like the way it is so i don't want to do any modification here and we have the user role okay so whenever a customer or the visitor fill up the registration form so what kind of the account will the user have so it can have the subscriber account contributor author editor and the administrator of your wordpress website and we have the customer and the shop manager so we also have the customer and the shop manager option because we have installed the woocommerce in our website so right now i'll just simply go with the subscriber here and you can even add the custom user meta here and here we have the user account activation okay so how you want to activate the user's account okay so in the default it will simply it will simply activate the account whenever the user create the account in our registration form but if you want to activate the account by email activation you can simply do it from here and you can also do the manual approvals but right now i will just simply stick with the default value here and we can also send the activation email to the user when the user created the account so by default it will actually send the activation email to the user's uh, email otherwise you can change the value to the none and it won't send the email after activation of the uh, user in our wordpress website okay so let's put to the default value and we also have the additional settings in which as you can see here we have the option to automatically log in the newly activated user so i want to enable this and we also have the second option that hide the form if the user is already logged in okay if the user is already logged in into our wordpress website so this would actually hide the form and we will have this message instead of the login form okay so now let's click on the behavior and in the behavior first of all you have the submission behavior okay so after submission so when we submit the form what should be the response of our website so it will actually respond sir with the inline message that uh, account registration successful click here to log into your account okay that's fine and we have the method for the submission behavior that is ajax so i will stick with the default value and we have the validation so do i want to do the validation on the submit or on the server side so let's just stick with the default value i want to do the validation on the submit okay so we also have the submission indicator in which it will actually show the loader when i am actually submitting the form so this is it so you can change the value here if you want to and we also have some security options so let's just keep these values to the default values and we have the life span of our submission form so let's just keep it to the default value okay so we also have the option of the rendering uh, so we have the two options in the rendering load the form using the ajax and prevent the page caching on the form pages so i want to enable both of these options and in the last we have the save in the continue okay so this option will actually allow the user to save their progress and return to submit the form at the later time okay so i don't want to enable this so let's click on the email notification so in the email notification as you can see here admin email is the email of the administrator and we have the user confirmation email so if you want to do some changes in the confirmation email you can simply click here and you can simply do some changes here if you want to but right now i will just keep it like this so we will simply keep it short in the suite so we have the recipients here we have the advance here and we have the conditions so let's close this now and 
go into the integrations okay so we can actually integrate our form with the third party applications okay so for the integration first of all you would have to go into the integrations but before that let me just save the draft here and now we will actually go into the integrations and you can see here i can simply integrate my formulator form with any of these apps here uh, i can integrate them with the mailchimp we can do it with the google sheets slack and the hubspot so let's go back to our forms and let's click on our form here that we were creating so let's click on the edit and let's go into the settings because we have done everything here okay so in the settings we have the data storage so if i want to store the submission in the database i can simply enable this and we also have other these options that you can explore by yourself so now let's have a look at our form here so as you can see here we have our form here so now let's publish our form and this is actually the short code of our form so let's close this and we need to go into the pages here so we have successfully created our user registration form so now let's go into the pages and i want to create a new page here and let's just add it with the elementor okay so let me add the section here so i want to add uh, this one okay click here and now we have to look for the formulator widget so let's just scroll down and you will be able to see the wordpress here and in the end you will see the formulator widget okay so let's just put it into the center section and you can add the title of your form but right now i'll just skip this so we can actually select the form here which is actually the registration form so click here and as you can see that because i am already logged in in my wordpress website as the administrator so let's just save this and i just want to add the heading here so let's click on the heading it would be sign up okay so it would be the h1 and i want to have the black color that looks fine now let me just drag it to the up here and let's just align it to the center now it looks good okay so now let's just publish this all right so now you can see here we have published our page here so now let's just go back to the dashboard of our wordpress and from here we have to rename our sign up page so it is actually the elementor 84 so i have to rename it into the sign up okay so let's just copy this paste it here okay so let's update our page here and now let's have a look at our page and we have the sign up page but i am already logged in so we don't see the form here so now let me just uh, copy this url of our sign up page and i will now simply try to use another open up the chrome here and paste the link here and you will be able to see the form here okay so if we do the form submission here so let me just write down the name here and email so it is actually the dummy email okay so let's click on the registration and we have successfully created the account okay so the thing is that this data will be stored in our wordpress database okay so if i go back to the dashboard here and from here if i click on the users and click on the subscribers you will be able to see the name of the uh, user that i have added right now and you can see the email here and role is actually the subscriber so the data of the form submission is actually storing in the database of our wordpress okay so now what we need to do we have to create the login form okay so now let's just go into the formulator again and i want to create the login form here okay so let's click on the forms and let's just quickly create the login form here so let's click on the create and i want to create the login form continue create and we will have the same options as we had in the user registration form okay so let's just uh, click on the appearance we have the username or the email and the password for the login that's good and in the appearance uh, select the flag and we have the same options as the registration form so let's click on the user login and from here and the additional option that you will see here is the remember b field so if you want to show this simply enable this or if you want to disable this you can simply disable it from here by clicking on the hide and we also have this additional setting so let's click on the behavior okay so after the login uh, you can redirect it to anywhere 
so i want to redirect it into my account click apply and notification okay so let's skip this integration settings okay so we are good here so now let's just have a look at our login form it is looking fine now let's just publish our login form here okay so our form is ready so now let's just use it into our wordpress website okay so let's just click on the pages and i want to add the new page here and i actually want to add this with elementor okay so here just like the user registration form i have to search for the forminator widget here and we have to select this all right and now what we need to do we have to choose the form here which is actually the user form apply the changes now i want to add the heading login here it would be the h1 and click on the style color would be the black and align it to the center that's great so let's just drag it to the up here okay so now let's just publish our page here and have a look at our page here okay so now you can see that we have this login page so now let me just rename this from here in the dashboard quick added login let's just update this and go back to our page here refresh this now you will be able to see the change here okay click on the login now you can see that we are already login so now we will actually go in google chrome and from here let's just refresh the page so i am already logged in so let's click on the my accounts and from here i will simply log out and you have to remember one thing here that you don't get the logout functionality in the forminator form okay because i got this functionality from the woocommerce store because since i'm using the woocommerce in my wordpress website so i got this logout functionality from there so you just have to remember that so now we will simply go into our login page that we have created and you will be able to see our login page that we have created and you can simply log in from here as well but you have to remember one thing here that the formulator forms do not provide the login or the logout functionality they actually use the core functionalities of the login and the logout of the wordpress okay so that is it so that is how it works okay so in this video we learned to create the registration form and the login form using the forminator and if you really find this video useful hit the like button and subscribe the channel